Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Revive Cast. I know it's been a, a little while since I've been here. Uh, just been crazy uh, with work and coaching and you know all the little things that we're having to do with business. But I'm back finally. Um, and today um, I'm solo. Uh, so what I thought I'd cover is, a, is something I get asked a lot of questions about. Um, and it's a, it's a topic to where there's a pretty deep rabbit hole to it. Um, and, and that's talking about the gut. Um, and when we talk about the gut, we can break that down into like numerous parts. I mean, something as simple as just as digestion, um, bowel movements, it can be uh, dysbiosis in the form of SIBO or candida or, you know, parasites or yeast overgrowth. Um, th there's so many things that are connected to the gut um, all the way to, you know, the immune system, uh, hormones, um, thyroid. I mean, the gut, you know, everybody uh, has, should know by now that we call it like the second brain, right? Because of the interconnection um, with everything else within the body. Um, so we've come to realize how important the gut is and how important gut health is and keeping that optimized to make sure that we stay healthy um, and we're able to get um, results that we're working for, whether that's from a health perspective or whether that's uh, from a physique perspective in the gym um, to make sure that, you know, we're able to do that without like bottlenecks or an uphill battle. So what I'm going to cover today, um, I'm not going to go deep into the rabbit hole. I'm just going to cover some basics here on, on some things uh, that you can do to uh, help you optimize your gut, uh, to keep it on the right track. Um, if you are suffer, suffering from like a, a small things, um, not any major issues like SIBO, uh, little things that you can do to help self-correct those um, and kind of nip them in the bud without let, letting them get out of control. Um, so when we talk about gut, you know, the first thing let's talk about um, is the process of digestion, right? So that in and of itself with digestion, like a lot of people, okay, that's when you're chewing food up, you swallow it, it goes in the stomach, obviously it comes out the other end. Now the digestive process actually starts before you even put food in your mouth, right? So it starts with your sense of smell, right? So you start smelling something, um, you start salivating. Um, and at that point you actually start producing enzymes that will help break start breaking down food right so that's a, a important process another thing that comes into play is making sure before you actually start eating your meal is to make sure your body's in a state to where everything can be directed towards digestion right and what i mean by that is making sure you're in a parasympathetic state you know, everybody calls it the rest and digest state and, 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 and rightfully so, um, because we need to be in a, in a state of calmness. Um, but the problem with today's society is that everybody's like, you know, go, go, go. Uh, they're always in a hurry. They're eating meals in like, you know, two or three minutes, they're just like scarfing things down. They're not really even chewing their food. Um, and then they're just, you know, onto their job or whatever they're doing and pretty much their whole day's like that. Right. It's just, never hardly any time to sit down and actually eat a meal. You know, our bodies can handle that in, in very acute periods. Um, but if you are repeatedly doing that day in, day out, at some point, you're, you're going to reach this threshold to where you're going to start causing disruption in the digestive process. And that in and of itself can lead to gut dysbiosis in, in numerous forms, right? So, one thing I need to reiterate with you guys is to make sure if and whenever possible, when you have meals, to sit down, relax, and enjoy the meal, but experience the meal, right? Um, I know some of us say that we eat just for fuel, um, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, we need to enjoy, enjoy the foods that we're eating. You know, I'm kind of a foodie. I love trying different types of food. You know, if you watch me on my Instagram, you're seeing that I'm going out to eat to different uh, places and restaurants and, you know, all, all, all the time. Um, but we need to experience it and not just throw it down our, you know, mouth and then go on to our next thing that we got to do that day. Um, so sitting down, relaxing, being in the moment um, and eating slowly, chewing your food thoroughly. Um, you, you basically kind of want to chew it until it's like in a semi 
liquid state. Now you don't have to be over anal. Like a lot of people will say, you know, chew it 30 times before you swallow it. Now, um, I don't want to sit you, obviously you're going to sit there and count every time that you take a bite of food. That's uh, a little, um, OCD and a little bit over the top. Uh, but just make sure you're taking your time, chewing your th- food thoroughly, especially things like, um, your meats, uh, that really need to be broken down before you actually swallow them. All right. Because, you know, the first step, you smell the food, start salivating. The next step, you put it in your mouth. You start chewing it, masticating, um, breaking. You're starting the breakdown process there. And then, obviously, you swallow it. Um, then it goes down into the stomach. Within the stomach, obviously, at that point, stomach acids should be produced. Um, and at that point, another step in the process, right, then it's going down into the intestines. And then, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm obviously skipping some things. We're going to the intestines and then, you know, out the back end. Uh now, along that process, uh, we got to make sure that um, we have sufficient amounts of stomach acid um, to do its job, su- sufficient amounts of pancreatic enzymes, sufficient amounts of bile acids. Um, each one of those also you're breaking down your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Um, so it can be um, assimilated, absorbed into the body and used properly for the nutrient breakdown and energy. Uh so going back to sitting down in that calm state to eat so all those processes can occur is vital. So imagine in, in, in today's society and with most people, we have you know, a lot of stress. Um, so when you're kind of in that higher stress state, that sympathetic state where you are basically um, not delegating your energy resources in the body to digestion, you're, 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 you're going to other parts of the body, like the extremities, the heart, you know, um, for focus, uh, to do whatever you're trying to do task at hand. And you're just in that sympathetic dominant state. Um, if you're in that state, when you sit down to eat, you're not delegating energy to the digestion. And then on top of that, the higher stress environment can lower stomach acidity, but then also understand you know, that's the process within the stomach of breaking foods down, the initial step. But if you have a lower stomach acidity, understand that stomach acid is a trigger for um, the release of pancreatic enzymes and bile acids. Um, so again, that's, that's three major component components to the digestive process. And if you're in that sympathetic state, you're down-regulating those process, and then you can't break down the food properly. So now when you do that and you do this repeatedly, you know, meal after meal, day after day, week after week, you can see how this can become an issue really fast. Um, Because what will tend to happen is, you know, people will use the term leaky gut. So we we can develop leaky gut in a set. So all that is, is you increase the permeability um, within the gut. Uh, So basically we have, let's kind of simplify this. We have like a mucosal lining, right? Um, and you can use like an analogy, uh, of like your lips, right? So here my lips, there's this moisture, um, uh, above the lips, like a, a, a mucus. Um, and then, you know, kind of what happens when your lips are really, really dry, right? They, they start cracking. Um, uh, and then you can kind of think of the mucosal lining the same. So if that dries up and it's not in the place that it typically is, and it dries up and cracks, um, then toxins and stuff start basically getting through the wall and getting into the bloodstream, creating an immune response. So what we want to make sure is what we maintain tight junctions and have a semi-permeable gut lining. Like you want to have a little bit of permeability because we want the good things to get through, but the bad things to stay where they need to stay and not leaking into the, um, the bloodstream. Um, and that can happen over time. If you're eating in a sympathetic state, you're always overstressing the body. You're not having sufficient amounts of stomach acid, uh, pancreatic enzymes, bile acids to do their job. Um, and then that just compounds over and over and over. Um, then you create permeability in the gut. These, every time you eat, these toxins will get into the bloodstream, cause an immune response. Um, and then understand that 80% of your immune system is in the, 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Um, you're going to cause like a lot of cytokines to be released. Um, obviously inflammation is through the roof at this point. And then that leads to more and more issues, right? I mean, there's just this big rabbit hole that can occur. So the take home from that is to make sure that you are eating in a low stress environment and you're taking your time to chew your food, right? We want to make sure that we make 
the process as smooth as possible uh, when it comes to digestion. Now, outside of that, you know, the digestive process, what can we look to to help, you know, keep the gut strong, um, help keep digestion on point, um, and keep it as simple as possible? So things that we need to kind of look at. Uh, food sources, right? Because um, if you're eating a lot of processed foods, things that have a lot of chemicals, fake sugars, um, are going to cause disruption in the gut biome. Um, if you're looking at things like antibiotics, uh, medications, um, disturb the gut biome as well, right? It, so if these things are in play, you can bet there is some type of dysbiosis going on in the gut. Most people have it, but it, you know, it's to what degree do you actually have it? Because the thing I can tell you is, and it's been in research, you can have like an IBS or something and you can have it for three to five years and it's kind of like, think dormant in a sense, before your body kind of reaches this threshold to where you actually start having these symptoms of IBS um, or another gut issue, right? It's kind of laying dormant, but you keep pushing the envelope and then at some point things break and there's a trigger and then you go over your threshold and then all these symptoms come. So it's not something that just happened overnight. These things are festering over years and then all of a sudden something gives. You know, we can look at the fitness community. There's a lot of people in the fitness community um, that have gut issues um, and they don't understand what happens because with in our community, you are eating the, you know, quote unquote healthy foods, the clean foods day in and day out. Um, and you don't typically change your food sources up that much. And then all of a sudden you develop these uh, gut issues, right? You're bloating, your gas, uh, constipation, diarrhea. Uh, and they're like, where did this come from? Um, but you have to look at the environment of a fitness enthusiast, especially on the extreme end, um, like a competitor. Um, typically the cleaner foods that they, you know, quote unquote, cleaner foods, diversity of foods are lower. Um, meaning that they're having like a higher carb diet with a lower fiber diet, right? High carbs, low fiber, not really a good mix over time because fiber is needed not only to um, help feed good bacteria, help strengthen the uh, gut lining uh, and help also balance blood sugar levels. Um, if you're constantly pounding all these carbs and all this food with a low amount of fiber, at some point, something's gonna give. Uh, and then you start getting disruptions in the gut biome and leading to another issue, right? On top of that, a lot of, especially competitors, or honestly, I, I shouldn't even you know narrow it down to competitors. Honestly, in today's society with people with high amounts of stress, everybody's in this high stress state. Uh, competitors just is tenfold because the amount of you know stress they're putting on their system from a training perspective, and then the cardio, and then if they're dieting, um, you know, just under eating nutrients. Uh, that on top of lower fiber intake, you're just combating the issue, and at some point, you typically will have a gut issue. Um, you can you can look at food sources. Obviously, is a huge component to this. Um, and guys, you just got to get away from. And I see it so much that, like the base, like you know, chicken and rice or cream of rice. Uh, it's like the most easy to digest foods, which in and of itself is not a it's not a horrible thing. But you're forgetting about all the good things that you need to be putting in your gut to keep it healthy, right? So we need to look at things that help. Uh, feed good bacteria, things that help strengthen the mucosal lining like fiber. And you need to have foods outside of rice and cream of rice to get that done. That, that has no fiber in it. So to think that's a, a nutrient value, it, 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 you're sadly mistaken. You know, yes, things like sweet potatoes are great. Um, oatmeal is great. Fibrous veggies, uh, fruits, you know, keeping those things in decent amounts throughout um, your diet, even in a deficit, is, is crucial to longevity and gut health. But people are just like, well, it's easier on my gut. Well, yeah, I understand that. But at the same time, why are you having gut issues? Look at other causes to that. It's not just the solution of let's eat something that has no fiber in it. And so it can pass through and not ferment or, you know, cause any bloating or gas. When down the road, you're making the situation worse because you're making your gut weaker. The lining is weaker. You're getting more permeability, right? So you have to put things into play uh, to help with these issues. Uh, a simple thing that you can put into play is, is this is where supplementation can come in handy, right? If you are obviously in a diet and you're deficit and you can't have as many nutrients, adding things like, you know, a, a greens powder, which has prebiotics in them, even some probiotics. Then you can look at adding in even like a specific GI supplement like we have with GI Plus, 
um, to help with strengthening the mucosal lining um, and feeding bacteria, right? You have to feed the good bacteria for them to um, stay elevated to the levels that we need for a healthy gut. Um, probiotics are good to an extent. The issue with probiotics is there's so many probiotics on the market, right? There's things with 50 billion or 100 billion or whatever it is of strands in there. But the thing people aren't looking at is the quality of the strand uh, or of the species and the strains, right? Like people look at the genus. Like you, with a probiotic, you have a genus, you have species, and you have strains. So like the genus is like lactobacillus. The species could be uh, uh, acidophilus. And then the strain could be something like a NS or a NCFM, right? Um, and like with lactobacillus, that's a genus. And there's like numerous variations of lactobacillus. But are you having the ones that have been, you know, clinically researched to show that they have positive effects on us? And each one does something a little bit different. You know, I don't want to get too much in the rabbit hole of, of probiotics, but just to kind of touch on a little bit, like lactobacillus acidophilosis is the genus and the species. The different strands of that genus species could be the NC, uh, NCFM. Uh, it could be the 8702, uh, RC14. Um, and then outside of the lactobacillus acidophilosis, there are paraceces, there are plantarium. There's different types of species um, and then the strands. And then what do they, those do within the system? With uh, NCFM, that is uh, inoculation. With the um, uh, 8702, that's kind of like an upper respiratory thing. If you're looking at the RC14 uh, strain, that's going to be more UTI um, if you're looking at the uh, UALA01 um, strain, that's going to be more of uh, inflammation, more of a neural inflammation. If you're looking at lactobacillus plantarium, that's going to be anti-inflammatory. Uh, the uh, bifidobacterium, that's going to be something that's more antibiotic protectant, which, as I talked about earlier, antibiotics can disrupt the gut biome because it kills everything off, right? Even the good bacteria. So guess what you probably need to be taking specifically as you're taking antibiotics, you need to take a specific strand of a probiotic to keep that from destroying everything within the gut. You know, does that make sense? Um, so you would take the bifidobacterium, you can take some other strands with that um, to have that protectant in there so you're not degrading the gut biome. Right? Because you can see how, guys, that I can just, you can kind of get off into all directions with the gut and I can talk in a million different uh, ways and I can detour here, here, and here. Um, and it can get really confusing. Um, but you can just, I just want you to see that there's so much encompassing the gut, right? And if you do some of the simple things, you don't have to worry about this down the road. So keeping diversity of food, um, sitting down when you're eating in a calm environment, chewing your food thoroughly. Um, hydration, hydration's huge, right? Um, you have to have that for motility of the gut and motility for bowel movements, right? Bowel movements. Oh, there's another one. Are you going to the bathroom every single day? If not, that's an issue. It could be because you don't have enough fiber. It could be because you don't have enough hydration. And if you're not excreting, you are going to be backing up toxins within the system. It could be something like estrogen or other toxins. Um, then you look on top of other things like sleep. Are you sleeping enough, right? So during sleep is a recovery process. That's when things like the migrating motor complex does its job. It's like the sweeper in the gut to where you sleep. It kind of brushes through, gets rid of all the toxins and extra pathogens that are in there, does its job, and then you're good to go. It actually does that between meals too if it's long enough. Um, lifestyle issues, like I talked about, society today, everybody's stressed and go, 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 right in a rush. They eat their meals in two seconds. Um, so changing your lifestyle a little bit to accommodate better digestion. So looking at all these little factors here and, you know, taking away what, okay, what's one or two things I can do right now within my lifestyle to help with my digestion, to help uh, with my gut health, right? Pick any of those things that I've just mentioned previously and do one or two of them. Then when that becomes like a lifestyle for you and something you're doing on a regular basis, do a couple more and then do a couple more, right? Um, but in and of itself, if, to keep it simple, guys, you know, add in these simple products if you need to, to um, help with gut health. This is, you know, your feeding, 
product that's going to feed the good bacteria. Um, this is going to help with the gut lining, the mucosa lining, and keeping it strong. You could take both of them together, right? Um, a good quality um, strain identified probiotic, something simple like Ultraflora um, from Metagenics. Um, great baseline product uh, that isn't over the top and has scientifically proven strands in them. Um, and then making sure that you are, you know, having diversity in your food. Don't just eat rice and chicken. Make sure you're getting diversity in there. The more diversity, the better. Um, so I know I kind of like went all over the place a little bit there, guys, but I just want to kind of give you some key points. Just this, this podcast is kind of like something I just want to get some points out there, not like a one specific topic on gut health. Later on, we can actually dive into something more specific like, uh, what do you do when you, if you're dealing with SIBO um, or candida or something like that? You know, we can get a little bit deeper into it. But I just want to cover some points today to where you understand the, all the interconnections with the gut, the simple things that can affect it to a, a greater degree and things that you may not be cognitive of that may be going on and things you may not be doing, but something you can easily correct, right? Um, so if we take some of these steps uh, that I talked about today and you, you implement them in a daily routine in your life, it will help with your gut. I can tell you that right now. Um, cause the last thing you want to deal with is severe gut issues. I see these cases all the time. Um, and some people can correct them in, you know, six to 10 weeks. Some people it's a year. You don't want to be one of those people. I've been one of those people, guys. This is something I've personally went through. It took me a whole year to fix my gut because of like previous things I did in my life and not having diversity of food, not having my fiber intake high enough, you know, putting a ton of stress on my body through training and trying to compete all the time. Like I could have done little things in there to prevent that, but I did not And I learned the hard way and I don't want you guys having to go through those same situations. Right. So I'm talking from experience as much as I am from, you know, application with clients. Um, so I hope this helps guys. Um, obviously if you ever have any questions about this, feel free uh, to message me um, through my Instagram. Um, if you have any questions about any of our products, obviously feel free to message me about those as well. And until next time, I will talk to you soon. <laughs>